If you haven't already heard about Lumber, I even checked on Lumber today. Um, even though it did have like a slight dip at some point at the beginning of 2021, it's now gone up like another 40 some percent and now sitting around 1200. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to YBI. We got Roman and Zion here back at it again for Young Broken Investing. How you doing today, my brother? Chilling, chilling. How you doing, man? It's been a good. minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to be back on this thing. Oh, I even forgot, you sure. know, here on YBI, we talk about financial ways and strategies to grow yourselves. And, and your finances. And your finances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So today we need to discuss uh, a topic that we brought up a while back and then didn't really hop into being the uh, the housing market and um, where we're at in that whole process. So I'm currently trying to purchase a home and um, I wanted to give you guys a little insight on where I'm at with that because it's wild out here in these streets. <laughs> so, um, so let's hop right in. I mean, just looking at some statistics from you know, previous years, the housing market is currently going crazy. Um, it's up at least, uh, it's at least 15%, somewhere around 19, 20%. That's what we're, that's what we're thinking from um, all the different sources that we've been looking at. Um, and they're selling, no, 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 that's not true. It was up 52%, but houses yeah. themselves were up 19%. So pretty much what that means is that everything's expensive. I heard uh, people hitting the like button has went up 52% as well. And sharing it with I, their friends have went up about 85%. That would That's probably true. I, I think that the statistics show exactly that, actually. The trend <laughs> is definitely going up. Um, pretty much houses are flying off the market. And it's, it's a, a, a very simple supply and demand kind of situation where we don't have enough houses for all of the people that are trying to move currently. Um, I think that one of the biggest things for that is that people are starting to get cabin fever where they're at and they're like, let's just switch it up, go somewhere different. And now that, um, interest rates are so low, uh, people yeah. can now afford to do that. You know? It makes, it makes more sense right now. If you were planning to buy a house to do it during this time when interest rates are literally the lowest they've pretty much been in years or even just refinancing, um, anything, you know, if take advantage of the low money that's the thing though you know you you have because you know i'm trying to i'm trying to buy something that's pretty small that's really really simple nothing like i'm trying to ball out nothing like that i'm just trying to do something where i can you know be a little bit closer to my my current places of work and then after a few years turn it into some rental property so i would stay there for maybe a year and a half two years uh pay probably double on my mortgage for that one and a half two years and then I'd be, you know, way better on, on my mortgage overall. So by the time I get out of it um, or rent it out, the person that comes in is going to be covering my mortgage. Obviously, I'll be making a little bit and then I can use that money to go and purchase something else. Um, but at the same time, they, these things are going fast. I mean, yeah. literally, the, there are things coming up on the market at 9 a.m. and by 3 p.m. they're gone. Like literally you don't have time to even go see them with my busy schedule. It's been really difficult, you know, but working with a team of people, which is something I absolutely recommend, work with a team of people that you can relate to and that understand your situation. Because, you know, my people are calling me like, hey, this house is coming up on the market. I think that this would fit your needs perfectly. Um, the numbers all worked out. You know, we ran all the numbers for you already. We just know that this is something that you would be into. So we just want to know if you want to go take a look at it. I'll take a look at the pictures and be like, eh, I'm not feeling it. Or yeah, let's go make this move. Um, but having people that are, you know, on your side and really willing to back you and work with you uh, makes the process a whole lot easier. It hasn't been fantastic because everything, like I said, has been flying off the market. You really have to look for things that, um, and and let, let's make this point: um, things are overpriced right now. Yeah, not only that, but like I, I asked you this question real quick: Did you have to? What did you have to do to basically get approved for for your house? Like I know right now banks are basically you have to be the primo lender at the moment, seven twenty credit score or or at least a good seven hundred or higher. And if you ain't coming on like 20% down or something like that, then you, 
I don't know, unless you just have a good relationship with your mortgage broker. But if you're just trying to go in for your first home, I've, a lot of banks are getting more strict on who they're uh, allowing financing. Yeah. So for me, um, I, I'm trying to go FHA because I don't want to, I don't want to put 20% down. Um, if I can put 3.5% down, um, I like to keep cash on hand. So that's the way the, the FHA loan. Yeah. Yeah. What um, is and it? If, what is it? Yeah, uh, what does FHA stand for? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, Federal Housing Association. I don't know. I have no idea. That's probably, that's probably really, really wrong. But what you can do is look at the link in the description below where we talked to a mortgage broker. And I'm sure that he gave us the definition of FHA. And he talked about conventional loans versus FHA and um, all of those different things. So y'all need to go check that out. And then take a look at this to uh, to really get you up to date on everything that's happening in the housing market. But for me, um, I want to put down 3.5% because I want to keep cash on hand. And I feel like, why not? Um, with that, with FHA, as you would see in the last video, is that you have to have renter's insurance because you're not putting in, we're not putting down the full 20%. But it once you get to 20% of your mortgage paid off, that renter's insurance goes away. So if I double my mortgage every month, instead of putting the 20% down, now I can pay into the 20% when I feel like it, but I still have that cash on hand. So it's my option. So, and you know, the renter's insurance isn't going to be as much as me putting down 20% right off the bat. So rather than putting down 20 grand, I put down three, 3,500. If I'm buying a house, that's, if I'm buying a house that's a hundred thousand, um, 20% is 20 grand yeah. versus 3.5% is $3,500. And then, you know, until I get to 20 grand with me paying my mortgage, then, you know, I have to pay this renter's insurance, but it works out for me mathematically. But at the same time, it restricts you a little bit in terms of your ability to go certain places. So I'm looking for a condo or a townhome. And there are a lot of places that don't accept FHA right off the bat. So it automatically limits you in terms of what it is that you can do with your buying power. Um, yeah. So like I said, it's it's a matter of working with people that know the market and are constantly watching it for you. So I don't have to go in and say, oh, I like this place. I'm falling in love with it. And they're like, yeah, they're not FHA approved. So that's a, that's a big thing for me. Um, and that's kind of where I was at with it. But I, wanted, I knew I wanted to go FHA. I knew I wanted to go with a condo or a townhome. And then... Um, Everything else was just kind of, it was pretty simple. I sent all the paperwork, you know, be organized when you're sending stuff to your, your broker. It's, it's like, man, I need to have um, all of my 2018 and 2019 and 2020 tax documents. I need to have all of my W-2s from the last two, three years. I need to have, um, what else? My ID, obviously. I need to have a copy of my social. There was just so much stuff that you have to have. And I sent it over in, you know, really nice, neat bundles. But since I work so much, they're like, they were confused. But yeah. um, make it Why easy. Why you got so many jobs, man? They literally were like, bro, you, you work like four places. I was like, yeah. And they're like, but we just need your tax documents from last year. I was like, yeah, that's it. They was like, what? Yes, I work a lot. So I sent a lot of different things over. But um, the more income that you show, the easier it is to get pre-approved. And um, then you go look and see what you like and uh yeah but like i said it's hard out here in these streets it's hard out here for a home buyer <laughs> yes it is yes it is so uh, in addition to with the housing market looking at what it is and even where you've been at um i guess even look at what it's doing to the overall markets themselves and just materials that we've been seeing um if you haven't already heard about lumber i even checked on lumber today um even though it did have like a slight dip at some point at the beginning of 2021, it's now gone up like another 40 some percent and now sitting around 1200 up from like 600. It's so it actually 50%. You know, right now actually about third, yeah, about 1300. It's about up it's like 60%. Yeah. That's a huge jump just in three months, mm -hmm. especially for lumber. That's usually stayed more or less constant for years during its times having little spikes here and there like i had a spike in 2018 when at the first little like stimulus and then it dropped after um dropped a little bit after that and then it pops back up during this now recent like housing rush and it's just it's just interesting to see um steel's also gone up a lot of materials has copper anything that pretty much goes inside of homes has skyrocketed and it's interesting just to see how those because 
the materials it costs to produce new homes and the new buyers as well are also inflating those prices. Because as, as new buyers want to rush the market and try to get new homes built, um, it's going to drive up the prices for those materials to get houses built quicker. Yeah. At the same time, you you need to be smart if you're looking at buying a home right now because the houses are overpriced. So you don't want to get into a situation where you're like literally at the top end of your price point. And then either one, you price yourself out of being competitive for a home because there are homes that are going twenty five to thirty thousand dollars over their list price because at they least. have so many offers. At That's least. crazy. For me, I'm like, I'm not paying thirty grand over list price. I'm not going to do that. Like, I'd rather buy something that has been sitting on the market for a little bit longer and figure out why. And, and then, you know, you can negotiate your prices down instead of them going up like that. You, you, and you're definitely, I feel like you're definitely looking at it for more of a uh, investment almost kind of standpoint. Don't, I mean, if it was like your forever home, if it was like 30 grand, and oh, yeah. it was, it was like a okay. dream home. Okay. You know, it, that kind of makes sense. Cause you'll probably make that 30 grand back up through equity or some point or through generational, just wealth building more than likely. Um, but you know, especially for an investment, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense to really pay too much over value, especially if you might be thinking about putting more money into it to raise the value of it even more. And then you already planning on renting out in the future. Anyway, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, you also have to look at the comps. You have to look at the comps yeah. for, the, for the area, you know, you don't want to buy a house that's fifty thousand dollars over market value, over the, market price, when the house right next door sold for fifty thousand dollars less. So if you never it, even watched HGTV before, the comps are the comparable houses in the market and what they are selling for for what you have. Um, so if you're looking at a house that's like a three bedroom, blah, 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 going for fifty k, um, you're going to expect houses in the similar area to be going for the same price. If there's houses that are going for like 80 grand and you have, you know, similar things, you can sell your house for about 80 grand because houses in the market are going around the same. That That's basically what comps are. Sorry. Yeah. Pretty much. You just don't want to oversell or overbuy on something. You know, I found a house that was 80 grand and it needed a few things like that would have cost me probably 20 grand. And then the very exact same spec house that I was looking to purchase. So for 140 grand. So I was like, cool, if I put 20 grand into an 80 grand house that could sell for 140, that's $40,000 profit right there. So that's a smart buy. But, you know, if it's the reverse where I'm already buying at the top end and it still needs stuff, then it doesn't really make sense for me to buy it, put money into it yep. for it to only sell for less. It doesn't make sense. So that's why it's taking me so long to mm -hmm. find something and to get in and to really just start all of those things at the same time. Like it's a hard process. So that's where I'm yeah. at. I mean, so I, I want to actually know if any of our viewers or listeners are currently in the house market, housing market, looking for house and how, how that's been going for them as just well as I'm just, you know, keep getting these updates to see what's going on um, throughout everything else that's also going on in the market in the world. All you can do is kind of just one day at a time and see what's going to happen that day in the news. How's the market? It's a great time. It's a great time. <laughs> I mean, unless you're out here, it's no fun. But looking for houses is absolutely the best part. The rest of this is just like. I feel like it's like when you watch somebody, I don't know, do something crazy or dangerous. You're like, that looks cool. I would love to do that. And you're like, eh, eh, I don't know. Really <laughs> yeah, so that's a, a brief overview of what the housing market looks like currently. Um. We appreciate y'all so much for, for tuning in and, and, and watching, um, but that's the, the housing market overall 2021. What, what month is this? August? April? August? <laughs> I don't, man, I ain't slept in four days. What you mean? If you, if you um, fast forward it like that. Yeah, hopefully this is not what it looks like in August. Yeah. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for contributing to our success. Watching us. And all other stuff. But as always, you guys know what it is. We may be young, we may even be broke, but we are always investing. Thank you guys so much. Till next time. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to Young Broken Investing. We just want to let you know that these are the opinions of the hosts. are not meant to be the basis of any security purchases or investments. We're trying to give a little information out there for everybody and uh, have fun and be safe.